HubSpot CRM tutorial for beginners 2023 full in-depth tutorial. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope you all are doing great and are having an amazing and incredible day. I bring you back with yet another great video and in this video we're going to be discussing about HubSpot and how you can use it as your very own personal CRM and it's like an, a great all-in-one platform for small businesses so yeah uh, let's just go ahead and get straight into the nitty-gritty details so first of all you're gonna move over to hubspot.com and you're gonna go to their product section and go to CRM now CRM is basically your customer relationship management okay like let's say you're running a proper business okay now in that business, obviously, you're going to need a CRM because a CRM helps you, you know, um, keep your customers in check, know what's, you know, uh, more popular with your customers and all that stuff. So it's basically a great uh, management for your customer analytics and stuff. So we're going to be discussing about all of that in great depth and detail. Now, once you're over here, basically, this is how you're going to get started with your HubSpot. So firstly um you know ignoring all of this stuff you can see in front of you ignoring all of this you're gonna go over here and you're gonna go ahead and click on get free crm now once you click on get free crm they're gonna bring you here okay create your free account now you can either use your google or sign up with your microsoft and uh, the cool thing about you know uh hubspot is that first of all it has unlimited users unlimited data and a uh, 1 million contacts and another great thing uh, is that you can upgrade it at any time when your business expands now obviously it's going to ask you to put in a, a an email to verify yourself now i'm going to be using a temp mail to get myself into this but uh, obviously i'm using it for like you know the video tutorial purposes if you're going to do this for the long run i recommend that you use a proper full-fledged email okay because a temp mail is easily disposable and it can easily be lost so i'm going to put in an email okay now once you put that in you're going to click on verify and when that happens it's just going to send a verification code to your email same will happen with you know your gmail yahoo etc so you know just make sure about that so my code is 853804 i'm just going to put that in 853804 there we go i'm going to click on next and once i click on next it's going to bring me here it's going to ask me to create my password so you're going to make sure to create a password according to you know the requirements and once you're done with that it's going to ask you to put in your first name and your last name okay i'm going to put that in and now we're going to click on next. So what industry are you in? OK, now this is the important part, because in the industry section, uh, this is like the place where you're going to actually tell them what company or what category related CRM you actually wanted to. Now, obviously, as you can see, 135,000 customers in over 120 countries are growing with HubSpots. So you can put in your industry. OK, I'm going to go with uh, the marketing okay you could be a marketing and advertising agency and once i've done that i'm going to click on next what is your job role you know you could be executive assistant ceo all that stuff i'm going to go with ceo and i'm going to click on next what is your company's name so just you know this can be changed later on okay don't worry about this i'm just going to call it you know let's just call it the best influencers just random name you know and just click on next how many people work at your company now obviously this is uh, where you're going to add all you know the um you could say detailed information about your page so how many people work this obviously depends accordingly like as much people as you put in the more you you could say um privileges it gives you with the crm now i'm just gonna go with uh, the median number like let's go 51 to 200 now what is your company's website okay now if you don't have a website just keep it blank and just click on next but if you do have a website just put it in okay and you could like put something random in to be honest it doesn't really matter and once you've put something in okay uh just go ahead and uh you know click on next because they, they don't really ask you like very major details you could say now once you're here it says where would you like your data to be hosted 
Based on your location, we recommend the U.S. Now, obviously, if it's recommending, it's if it's like recommending you something, you should go with it. But if you want to go with uh, Europe, it's totally upon you. I'm gonna go with the states for now and click on create account. So, once all of that happens, basically, it you know starts creating my account, starts you know going into the details and stuff. So, how would you like to get started? Now, first of all, there's a quick start where you choose from preset options to optimize your marketing, set up a sales process or boost your online presence. And then there's obviously your manual setup where they will guide you through starting from scratch. OK, now we don't need a guide. OK, we're just going to go ahead and click on quick start. OK, we're just going to go ahead and start already. In some cases, it's also going to uh, ask you to choose a demo where they're going to say get a feel for your free CRM, there's something for everyone. You know, they're gonna tell you to choose it for marketers, salespeople, sales leaders, and all that stuff. They're gonna give you a proper interactive demo, okay? Now, you can get that interactive demo if that is what you want. But obviously, the interactive demo isn't needed if you're watching my video because I'm just gonna be going through everything important there is when it comes to, you know, using your CRM. Now, once you've obviously, you know, done everything, just go ahead and reload the pages. And once you've, you know, reload the pages, just go ahead and sign in with your accounts. So here you have it. You're going to enter the email that we just picked off, enter the password that we just kept. You're going to go on remember me and then just click on login. And once you do that, here you are. So continue with the user, continue with this account. And once you've done all that, they're going to bring you to the dashboard. Okay. Now, here you have your dashboard and you're going to get like tons and tons of different templates over here. OK, now create dashboards from templates. First of all, there's your chat overview where you start with a dashboard of, you know, your six reports that show the kind of requests your team receives over chat. And it includes six default reports. Then you have the email overview. OK, start with a dashboard of six reports that show the kind of requests your team receives over email, and it includes six default reports. And obviously you have tons and tons of other dashboards. OK, you have marketing, marketing channel performance, sales, sales manager, sales opportunity review, sales rep, service overview, service performance over time, service team performance, service team ticket SLA performance, website visits and engagements, website analytics, all this stuff. OK, so this is, you know, your basic dashboard and up here, like this is not your dashboard. This is basically what you will choose to create your dashboard. Now, up here, you can see these widgets like contacts, conversations, marketing, sales, services, automations, reports. Now in the automations, obviously you can get sequenced automations or, you know, proper workflow automations for yourself. Now that obviously depends on however you want to approach the situation, obviously. Now, once, you know, you've uh, went through all of that again, make sure to choose a proper template for your dashboard. Obviously go with what suits your workspace the best, you know, uh, but once, you know, we've, uh, discussed about all that, let's, let's go ahead with a basic dashboard. Let's go with a chat overview now, over here. It says chat overview dashboard template who would find this dashboard helpful customer service managers. Okay. That works well for me reports included in the dashboard. Use the checkbox to remove any reports you don't want. You can remove these reports. Okay. But if you think they're fine, you're going to click on next dashboard name just you know name it anything so uh i'm gonna call it company chat space i'm just gonna call it that who can access this dashboard now it could be private everyone and you know all that stuff so you can mess around with this later in the settings too if you want to and once you've done that you're just gonna go to your dashboard and once you're in your dashboard obviously you're gonna get start getting all the data and all the analytics okay so here's everything and as you can see it's pretty good stuff now uh once you go in your uh you know notifications or settings like obviously we chose the um quick intro option where they're not going to give us any help but again if you choose the manual setup they're going to give you all the different types of stuff like add tracking code to your site create your first form import your contacts 
create an email list and your first email campaign, you know, all that stuff. But that's obviously just to get you familiarized with the product you are using. But obviously, if you don't want to just, you know, use the basics and stuff, you can just skip to this portion of the video. So obviously, this is, uh, as I told you, the dashboard, and you can also manage the dashboards accordingly if you want to. So if you go and manage dashboards, you can see in manage dashboards, you can get all this stuff over here. So you can create new dashboards in one dashboard space if you want to. And if you want to, you know, create dashboards, you can also choose the assigned people to your dashboard. So obviously, right now, it says everyone can edit but you can mess around and change this accordingly. Like you can choose change it to other people. Then you can also add reports like you can add from save reports. You can create a new report yourself, which is also a pretty good feature. And there's different reports that you can create from scratch. There's the single object where you can report on a single object, such as your contacts. You have custom report builder and all that stuff. And uh, it's, as you can see, pretty easy and basic stuff. So right now I'm going to exit it. And now we're going to go ahead and discuss contacts. You know, let's go ahead and discuss managing our contacts because contacts are one of the most important things when it comes to a CRM, because this is where you're going to invite your employees or maybe uh, your clients or, you know, employer. Now, do know this, that free HubSpot allows you up to a million contacts, you know, and a million contacts, like realistically, that is a lot. That's a ton of contacts and like it should be more than enough for a CRM. So you should be pretty much good to go when it comes to, you know, all this. So now once we're in the managing contacts section over here, as you can see, they already have like two custom contacts for us. And over here, as you can see, this is their name, their email. Uh, they don't have a phone number, but you can add it if you want to. You, uh, Their contact owner is unassigned, but you could choose to do that and all that stuff. So this is how you can manage your contacts. And let's say if you want to delete your contacts, what are you going to do if, in that case? All you're going to do is you're going to like, let's say if you want to delete all of them, you're going to click over here in this checkbox. Once you do that over here, it's going to say delete. Just click on delete. And there you go. You are about to delete two records. Deleted records can be restored after 90 days. So basically the records are going to be stored into a trash can and you can't restore them after 90 days. So, you know, keep that in mind once you're doing all of this stuff. And then you can also, uh, you know, do other stuff like you can assign these to someone. So like you can create a contact owner, you can assign them to yourself. And this is basically bulk assigning, like you can assign them all at once, which is also a pretty good um, feature. You can edit information. So select a property to edit. This is obviously bulk editing. You can edit multiple fields by just changing, you know, one category over here. So that's bulk editing. And again, pretty uh, easy stuff, pretty fun stuff, you know, efficient and smooth working. You know, that's what I believe your HubSpot CRM actually brings you then. Obviously, you can uh, create tasks in bulk as well. So choose tasks for contact name. You have types of work. You have priorities assigned to and all that stuff. You know, that stuff you can choose. You also have enroll in sequence. Uh, but obviously, these are things that you need to upgrade for to work with. So I'm going to skip all that. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about how you can connect your email account to your HubSpot. Okay, now. Connecting your email account can be a bit of uh, because you're going to need to import your contacts. So for that, you're going to need to connect your email account. So for that, we're going to go on settings in the top right. You're going to come to the left hand side and you're going to find integrations. OK, so integrations are going to be here in account and setup. And once you go in integrations, OK, you're going to go on email service provider. Now, once you're an email service provider, you're going to obviously sync an email. So for that, you're going to click on connect email provider. And your email provider needs to be one of these five, you know, MailChimp, Campaign Monitor, Aweber, a Constant Contact or Get Response. Now, if you have none of these, uh, then you can't really sync your emails. So make sure to have at least one of these. Now, once you have one of these, basically just sync them. And once you sync them, uh, after syncing them, connect your inbox and your inbox can be anything like Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, obviously. And yeah, once you've done that, that will basically uh, sync your email 
and connect your email account to HubSpot. And let me tell you, that is an extremely useful tactic and feature to have by your side because uh, later on, once you're importing contacts or you want to send someone a message in their inbox, this feature is going to be the most useful later on. And uh, it's, it's going to be pretty useful because, uh, you know, once you're contacting your workers or employees, they're going to need to know who's contacting them. Like if they get an anonymous email and stuff like that, obviously they're less likely going to be clicking on it to see who it's from and all that stuff. So yeah, that's why email syncing is pretty important. And once you're syncing, obviously, uh, it's going to ask you all those verification stuff like HubSpot wants to connect to your Google account or Yahoo account. And once you've done all that, obviously, it's going to ask you to download an extension. Okay. Now, you have a choice. You can download the extension like it's a HubSpot, oh wait, HubSpot extension. Okay, let me show you what it's going to look like. So this is the extension. It's the HubSpot Sales Chrome extension. It's going to ask you to download that. But obviously, it depends on you if you want to download it or not. In the end, you're the master. If you want to install the add-on, if you want to install the extension, totally depends on you. But you can skip that part if you want to. So once, you know, we've uh, discussed about all of that, you know, discuss about the extensions, how you're going to connect your contacts and all that stuff. Let's go ahead and discuss on how you're going to add new contacts for yourself. So go on contacts as so. And once you've gone in contacts, obviously there's two ways. Now, first way is to obviously import a contact and importing a contact. Obviously you're going to need to sync your email once your email is synced. So these are the two ways. First of all, import contact company deal ticket or product information into HubSpot. How are you going to do that? You're going to import it from, you know, your other emailing services, or you're going to import it using a CSV. Now a CSV is an Excel file. So if I go over here, CSV, look at that. CSV is a comma separator value file. It's an Excel file and it's going to look somewhat like uh, this on your Excel. Now, obviously, you're not going to have to write it exactly like that. Don't worry. It's going to be like this. OK, it's going to be very organized. And this is a CSV file. And you're going to basically import this into your uh, HubSpot. And once you've imported this, basically what it's going to do is it's going to accordingly uh, start writing all the contacts in your, um, you know, you see that CSV over there. It's going to start importing all your contacts. And once it's imported all of your contacts from there on out, basically, that's it. That's how you're going to add contacts. That's one way, though. Then you have the sync. Obviously, this is why I was telling you to sync your account, sync data between HubSpot and, you know, your other apps that you use for, you know, your contacts and stuff. And once you've done that, basically, you're going to basically allow your, uh, you could say, HubSpot to sync and, you know, get all the info for contacts from there. Now, once we've discussed about importing contacts, let's go and discuss how you can create your contacts by yourself. So to create contacts, you're just going to obviously click over here. Now, once you have, you know, clicked over there from here on out, you're going to get all this stuff over here. So you're going to basically first of all, start off from writing your contacts email. And once you've written their email, you're going to write their first name and last name. And after that, you're going to get these privileges. So these privileges are contact owner, job title, phone number, lifecycle stage, and lead status. So let's go ahead and, you know, write this stuff. So email, you've written the email as so. Then you're going to write the first name. And then you're going to write the last name and then you're going to tell them who the contact owner is. Obviously, the contact owner is me, John Leahy. And once you've added that, you're going to add the job title. OK, now the job title could be anything, you know, uh, let's call this person the vice executive. OK, let's, let's call them the vice executive. You can add in a phone number if you want to. Totally optional, to be honest. Now, once you've done that, choose the life cycle stage life cycle stage is obviously if they're a subscriber lead marketing qualified sales qualified opportunity customer all this stuff so i'm going to call him a subscriber and the lead status could be you know all this stuff like it could be new could be open could be in progress open deal it could be unqualified attempted to contact 
connected, bad timing, all the stuff, okay? I'm going to call them open. And once you've chosen that, now you can either do create and add another if you want to or, or just create it. I'm just going to go ahead and create it right now. And once you create it right now, basically, it's going to take you to the contact page as so. So here you are, okay? And here you're going to get all the, you know, little details about your contact, all the little, you know, information that you need for your contact. And uh, it's pretty, uh, you could say, fun stuff to have, you know, for your contacts. Now, as you can see, you have all this stuff going on. So this is a note. You can create a note for your contact. It says, you know, email. You can create an email for them. You can make a phone call with them, create a task, schedule a meeting, more options. And in the more options, you can, you know, log an SMS, log a LinkedIn message, log a WhatsApp message, you know, all this stuff. If they have connected, if like this contact has connected all that with, uh, you know, their main interface. Now, once we've, you know, discussed about all that, what we're going to do, like once you've made sure that everything is on point, everything is as you like it to be from here on out, you're just going to go back to your contacts list. And if we are in our contacts, as you can see, this is the contact that we just added. Obviously, these two contacts are the custom contacts they gave us. Let's not, you know, uh, let's not focus on those. Just focus on this one up here. So as you can see, here's the email, the owner, which is me. Now you can choose the primary company. There's a lead status. You can also see the created date. Okay. Now you can also like filter these things out. So as you can see, this is the all contact section. And in the all contact section, you can basically see literally the all contacts. Then you have my contacts over here. And in my contacts, these are only the contacts that you have. Then obviously the unassigned contacts who don't have an assigned owner and assigned boss to them. Okay. And trust me, assigning a boss, assigning an owner to a contact, it's pretty necessary because if they don't have an owner, they don't know who they're working under and they don't know who to follow orders from. So it's pretty necessary to, you know, again, assign an owner. So please do make sure to have a proper owner assigned for each project holder. Now, once all of that is done, you know, once we've discussed about contacts, once, uh, you know, importing them, syncing the contacts, creating them by ourselves, all that is discussed. You're just going to make sure to go through all of them again. You can uh, save this view if you want to, uh, unless like, you know, some type of data corruption happens. So save this view accordingly. And uh, yeah, once you've done all that again, uh, let me just summarize it all for you again to add contacts. You can either import them or create a contact for importing them. You can import them in the form of a CSV as so. A CSV is obviously an Excel file that you're going to, you know, create on a Microsoft Excel. And you're going to add all the employers and people you want to add to your board in, you know, your CSV. And once you've added them into your CSV, you're going to import them into this file over here. And once they've been, you know, properly imported, from there on out, what you're going to do and what's going to happen is just, you know, uh, get all the contacts into your HubSpot board. You can also sync them. This is a two way sync between two accounts. And once a two way sync happens again, the accounts are going to be imported. And again, pretty useful and easy stuff. Now, once we've discussed about that, let's go and discuss about adding proper users and teams okay now this is obviously a single contact this is like you know easy stuff let's go and discuss how you're going to add full team so for that we're going to go on settings and once you go on settings over here you're going to find user and teams which is going to be an account setup so here you have it user and teams and here you're going to get user and teams so create new users customize user permissions and remove users from your account now free hubspot allows unlimited users so we're going to be in users and we're going to click on create a user. So here we have it. Create a bunch of new users at the same time. So again, create new users, add email address if you want to. Now, uh, let's say I'm going to add an address as so. Now, once you have added an address here, they're also going to give you the option of creating multiple users at once. Now, again, same thing. 
create multiple users at once, import their info from a file. Again, you can use a CSV. Pretty amazing stuff. Makes your life so much easier. You know, the importing is so efficient. It's a great feature to have by your side. Speedy imports and all that stuff. So, yeah, you can use this again if you want to. But I'm going to skip this part. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and uh, add ourselves a proper user. Now, once we're over here, uh, we're going to get, you know, there's the user. Now you can assign them a team and to assign them a team, you're going to have to properly create a team. Now, once you create a team, obviously down here, you, you're going to get all this stuff like uh, CRM access. All users have a basic level of CRM access and are able to create records. You can manage the access for each users with these permissions. Then you have object access where manage records users can view, edit or communicate with. So view is choose which records the user can see. Edit is choosing which records the users can change. Delete is choosing which records the users can delete. And then obviously you have all this stuff, contacts, companies, deals, tickets, tasks, notes, invoices, all that stuff. You also have CRM tools, okay? Manage access to how users can interact with the records. You have workflows, communicate, bulk delete, import, export, edit property settings, chat flows, and all that stuff. So you also have the marketing section. Okay, in the marketing section, you're going to give them marketing access if you want to. As you can see, my marketing access is on. So that's also a great setting. You have the sales setting, service access. If you want to give them any, you have the reports access, account access, you know, all that stuff. So these are all things that you're going to need to keep in, you know, um, concentration when you're making a user. And once you've done that, you're going to finally send them an invite. You're going to get a summary of all the things you're giving them permissions to. And once you've done that, just click on send invite. And here you are. So success, you've invited one user. Continue setting up your users with these next steps. Okay, I'm just going to click on done. And here we are. So you have users. Now it comes to teams. Okay. Now, creating a team obviously can be done on the upgraded plan where you can set up team permissions, where you can keep your team organized and efficient by ensuring every user has the access to, you know, the right assets and right functions and details. Now, once we've discussed about that, let's go ahead and discuss the HubSpot inbox. OK, now the HubSpot inbox is also a pretty useful thing that HubSpot provides you. OK. You're probably wondering what the HubSpot inbox actually does. OK, now you can get a tour of the HubSpot inbox if you want to. I'm just going to skip it because I don't really find it necessary. Now, once you're over here in the HubSpot inbox here, you can see, first of all, you have the emails. OK, now in the emails, obviously, you're going to get uh, emails where you can manage and respond to emails from your very own inbox. OK, then. You have the chat section where you can connect your live chat to engage with your website visitors in real time. Then you have create bots for qualifying leads, scheduling meetings and customer support. Then you have the almighty connect and respond to forms from your inbox. Then you have the Facebook Messenger, obviously the best out of all of them, where which you can use to basically manage messenger conversations from your inbox you can also create bots for facebook messenger if you want to again great feature to have by your side but yeah that's the inbox chatting now you can also basically come down here and you have your chat flows snippets and templates to work around with now if we were to go in marketing and switch to ads here you can see yeah first of all you're gonna have to make sure that your ad blocker is turned off like once your ad blocker is off, that's the only way you can see these settings. So see which ads are turning visitors into customers. You're all in one place to manage all your Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Google ad campaigns. And you have the tie ad spend directly to company revenue. See who is interacting with each ad. Re-engage with existing contacts. Align advertising uh, with, you know, the rest of your marketing if you want to. And once you connect on account, you may be eligible for $500 dollars in ad credits now uh to obviously work around with this you can just go ahead and connect an account or you can see a quick demo for yourself if you want to 
Now that obviously depends on you if you actually you know want to do the ad pursuing and all that stuff if you want to do the ad marketing. Now if you don't want to get behind that, that's totally fine. You can skip this part and uh once you know uh skip the part and everything, uh you're going to go ahead to email. And this is obviously the email marketing. Now this is the most important uh aspect of this. First of all, you're going to have to upgrade your features. Now if you want to start sending emails for free, you you can click on get started over here. Send 2000 emails per month. Create 25 static and 5 smart lists and review basic reporting and more. And obviously further on, you can get all these other things like, you know, marketing hub professional. Now, obviously in case in like when it comes to retrospective marketing, in my opinion, landing pages are the best marketing aspect when it comes to, you know, CRMs or even like any other thing like you have um, your e-commerce stores and all that stuff. Landing pages are important because you can build lead capturing campaigning with landing pages. Uh, it has a great drag and drop editor where you can, you know, just choose it to create a landing page. Now, let's go ahead on sales. OK, now in sales, these are all your deals. And as you can see, build a winning sales process. Deals are the best way to keep track of how you are turning prospects into customers and how much money you are actually making over time. OK, now, again, this is a great thing to, you know, reside by great thing to have by your side. And uh, you can just, you know, go ahead and mess around with this accordingly with all of your sales. Now, in your sales deals, you can basically get, you know, appointment scheduled. You can uh, see the inability if you're qualified to buy. You can see if the presentations are scheduled. You can see if decision maker is bought in and if the contract is properly sent. But obviously, once you've, you know, discussed about all of that, you're going to be pretty much good to go after that. Now, again, uh, you can create deals for yourself. Again, import deals using uh, CSV or create deals. Now, if we go and create deals as so, let's click on it. First of all, you can choose a deal name for yourself. OK, now a deal name could be anything. I'm just going to keep a random deal name. Then you have the pipeline. Now, this could be, you know, your sales pipeline. Uh, I'm going to go with sales pipeline right now. You can add another pipeline if you want to. But again, you need the upgraded version for multiple pipelines in one workspace. Then you have the deal stage where you have the appointment scheduling. OK, now in the appointment scheduling, you could be qualified to buy presentation schedule, decision maker bought in contract send. I'm just going to go with qualified to buy. Add in the amount that the deal is made in. Uh, choose a closing date. Now, again, a closing date is pretty important, so make sure to choose the right one. Then you have the deal owner. Uh, I'm going to keep this my deal owner. Then you have the deal type. I'm going to go with new business priority. I'm going to keep it at high. Obviously, priority depends on you. OK, I'm just going to keep it high uh, just for, you know, the random purposes for it, like the tutorial purposes, if that makes sense. Now, once, you know, you kept up, you have uh, kept all that high from here on out. What you're going to do is you can click on create. And once you click on create, what that's going to do is it's just going to go ahead and create a deal for you. Now, again, uh, if you go back on sales, you have tasks now. Now, managing tasks can be a pretty abstract thing as well, because uh, tasks are, as we can see, it says introducing one workspace for your sales outreach. Spend more time prospecting than organizing your to do list. Filter, group, and complete tasks faster with a new layout. Plan your day and see your progress. You can track real-time prospect activity and preview your full calendar. So you can ask them to show you around, but I'm just going to cross that. And as you can see, this is the task management section. Now over here, again, same thing. Import your tasks or sync your accounts to do that. Or just go ahead and create your own tasks. Now creating your own tasks again more simpler in my opinion so i would always go with this setting now just again add anything you want to and once you've done that just uh, go ahead create a task and once you've created a task the same way you manage you know your contacts and deals with you know the bulk editing the bulk deleting and all that stuff that's the same way you're going to manage all these tasks down here okay now, uh, you could do bulk deleting and editing and assigning in this retrospect as well. So go ahead and mess around with it all you want, because it's it's really easy, uh, easy cleaning, easy working around with pretty efficient as well. And obviously, I can't emphasize enough on how 
smooth this works with you know your CRM and how efficiently this works with your CRM so once we've you know uh, got that down once we've understood how all of the managing happens let's go ahead and discuss about meetings now again you're gonna go in sales and here you have your meetings now again schedule meetings without the hassle Stop wasting time with endless what time works for you questions, back and forth emails, share scheduling pages with contacts, and they can easily book a time that works for them. Then events are automatically added to everyone's calendars. So obviously just go ahead and click on get started. Now, once you click on get started, obviously you're going to come over here. So make money from your meetings, add a payment link to a scheduling page so customers can pay after they choose a time. Again, remove the HubSpot logo from your booking page. This is to remove the bookmark and all that stuff. Now, to book meetings, obviously, you can also go ahead and integrate your Google Calendar with this service because you're probably wondering what will that do. Basically, connecting your Google Calendar will uh, make the HubSpot CRM more easier to configure when your meetings are, what days you're free, what days you're busy, what days you're probably, you know, have a holiday and all that stuff. So that's what that does so just go ahead and then you can also create yourself scheduling pages if you want to now scheduling page type could be you know a one-on-one -on -one, a group or a round robin now one-on-one -on -one is a contact which can schedule a meeting with a single person on your team then you have the group scheduling where um contacts can basically schedule a meeting with multiple people on your team then you obviously have the round robin where meetings are automatically distributed to a person on your team based on the criteria that you set. Now, once we've discussed about, you know, creating scheduling pages and, uh, you know, all that stuff, let's go ahead and uh, we'll talk about tickets. OK, now tickets are basically keeping track of your issues with your customers, create tickets and assign them to a member of your team so they can offer the right help at the right time. Yes, again, pretty useful thing to have by your side. And you can create tickets uh, the same way you created all the other stuff. Just go ahead on create and then just go ahead and create it, it as easily as you want. And obviously you have the automations, workflow, sequence, all this stuff. And you can only get these if you have an upgraded account. But yeah, that's basically most of the things that there are to HubSpot CRM. Now, if you enjoyed watching this video, please do make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see more videos like this, please let me know down in the comments below and I'll make more for you. And please do not forget to share this video around with, you know, anyone in need for a CRM tutorial. And yeah, that's basically about it. Uh, thank you for watching this video till the end. I hope you all keep having a great day. That was all from me and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.